Hey everyone, my name is Barry Pettit with Noonan Race Engineering. We're going to do a video today on the differences between a traditional 4.8 Hemi versus our Noonan Spec 4.9 Hemi. Uh, we'll start by going through the block, we'll work our way up to the cylinder heads, and at the end we'll talk about some of the differences that racers will see at the racetrack. So uh, hang tight, here we go. All right, we'll start in with the engine blocks. So looking at the 4.8 Hemi versus the 4.9 Hemi, the biggest difference is gonna be the bore spacing. All Hemis are normally called by their bore spacing. So a 4.8 Hemi is 4.8 inches from one bore center line to the next. The 4.9 Hemi is also the same thing as 4.9 inches from one bore to the next. That hundred thousandths may sound small, but it actually gives us a lot of room to do uh, improvements over the 4.8 platform. Looking at the major differences that that allows, that more bore spacing allows us to run a bigger bore. So on a 4.9 Hemi, a 4.565 bore diameter is very common. Uh, on a 4.8 Hemi, you're normally around a four and a half inch, so a 4.500. Having a bigger bore allows you to run bigger cubic inches if you're running a bigger stroke, or you could run the same cubic inches as a 4.8 running a smaller stroke, which gives you some more capability at higher RPM. The other difference that it will make is it allows for more lifter spacing. It spa spaces your lifters out on a 4.8 block. You're used to seeing a two or a 2.6 inch lifter spacing. 4.9 is a 3.3 inch lifter spacing. On top of that, these will run a Incho 62 keyed lifter. These blocks come with bushings in them ready to roll for like a Jessel style Incho 62 lifter. 4.8 Hemi, it's common to see a 904 or a one inch lifter. Having that bigger lifter gives you a little more bearing diameter for the oil around the lifter, uh, which helps just longevity of the lifter itself. Another major difference between a 4.8 and the Noonan 4.9 will be the cam height. So on a 4.9 Hemi, we raise the cam up an inch and a quarter. And what that does is you're, raise, you're increasing your camshaft center line to your crankshaft center line. That sounds like a small change again, but it changes a lot. 4.8 Hemi, you're used to seeing a 60 to a 65 millimeter camshaft. 4.9 raised cam allows us to go to a 70 millimeter camshaft. That allows you to run a bigger base circle, which means a more rigid camshaft, more load control on your ramp angles, uh, which also helps you at higher RPM, like the Hemi's normally like to see. And it also gives us a little bit more rigidity in the top of the block. So if you look at the 4.9 Hemi, you'll notice that the cam tunnel is actually providing structure where on a 4.8 Hemi, everything is sunk down and you have this void across the top. So on the 4.8 Hemi, if you run at the ragged edge or your block is, has many, many, many runs on it, you'll actually see the block start to bow. This raised cam design actually allows rigidity within the block to keep it from doing that bow motion uh, at higher RPMs or long runs. And also the raised cam allows us to run an enclosed cam tunnel. So on the 4.8, you can run normally max 4150 stroke. On the 4.9, you have an enclosed cam tunnel, which again adds rigidity on the underside of the block to keep from that bending motion. You're also able to run a 4250 stroke without having to go in and notch the rise and do stuff like that. So much bigger stroke capability with a bigger camshaft over the 4.8 Hemi. Also on a 4.9 Hemi, you have a splayed main cap versus a straight style main cap on the 4.8. So what we found was, was when we were designing the block, the side bolts on a 4.8 are not really capturing anything other than the pan rail around the main cap. So we changed our angle and for our side bolts on the 4.9. And what that does is it shares the clamp load of the main cap, holding the crankshaft up and keeps the cap walk or the fraying that you could see in the 4.8 platform from happening on the 4.9. You're just increasing your load around that crankshaft to keep everything tight while you're uh, spinning at higher RPMs. Moving from there, we're gonna go into the cylinder head area. So a lot of the changes that you make in the block obviously transfer into the cylinder head. You're able to run a bigger valve size based on your bigger bore diameter. You can fit bigger valves in. So on a 4.8 Hemi, you're normally a two and a half inch intake with a two inch exhaust. 4.9 Outlaw will run a 2.56 inch intake and a 2040 exhaust. Much bigger valves, more air into the chamber, more horsepower. You're also able to run your push rod angles straighter due to the raised cam and increased lifter spacing, uh, which allows a straighter load onto your rocker arms, better valve control, and overall less push rod bending moments like you could have in a 4.8 due to the, uh, the angles that you have to run due to the restrictions of the block spacing. And this is still with running 5.8 push rods 
on the 4.9 Hemi versus the smaller that you normally see in a 4.8. 4.8 uh, is fairly common to see in industry. You'll have a notch in the intake port due to the angle that the push rod has to come up into the cylinder head. Anytime you have a notch in the port, you're disrupting flow and it's, uh, it's, it's not ideal. 4.9 is running a bigger push rod and still not having that notch in the, in the port. So, and while we're talking about the cylinder heads, we'll look at the head studs. The 4.9 block runs a 5.8 head stud all the way around, whereas the 4.8 you're used to seeing a half inch and a 9.16 combination. That 5.8 head stud allows for more clamp load on the head gasket, and we also changed the pattern. So we put head studs at the ends. We're on a 4.8 block. Normally, if you're running it at the ragged edge, you could see the head gasket getting wiped out here. You'll see flame travel come through due to the distance from one head stud to the other. On the 4.9, you have this capsulated on the ends to where you're clamping down on your gasket better and the 5 8 head studs allow you to run 180 foot pounds of torque to clamp that down and keep all your horsepower in the combustion chamber. The last thing we'll cover will be the serviceability of the engine at the racetrack. So when you increase the cam height to do all the changes that we've mentioned, you're making the block stronger. You're making the entire engine strength higher than what you would have on a 4 8 block. When you do that, you're having your components run happier for a longer period of time. What I mean by that is you're having less lash adjustments in between rounds. You're having better reliability on all of your valve train components and the stability therein. Another note that customers normally give us from the racetrack for serviceability would be how easy it is to access bottom end components on a 4.9 versus a 4.8. So on a 4.8, you'll have four down studs that come from the cylinder head through the block into the intake valley. Anytime you need to swap a piston or anything like that, you're having to pull the blower off, which is heavy, takes a lot of time. On a 4.9, you can access your bottom end by taking the cylinder head off without removing your blower. We do that by removing the five bolts that go from the intake manifold down into the cylinder head and then you take the 12 nuts for your head studs off, yank your cylinder head off, go to work. Saves you a lot of time and energy in between rounds and makes a big difference if you're in a time crunch. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you have any more questions about a 4.8 Hemi versus a Noonan 4.9 Hemi, we really uh, would appreciate if you reach out to us and give us a chance to answer those questions for you. Uh, we're very excited about uh, this, this season and the upcoming races and seeing how all the racers do at the racetrack with, with both platforms, really. Um, and also, we uh, encourage you to like and subscribe our channels and stay tuned for more tech videos that we have coming in the near future. Thank you everyone for sticking around and we'll see you on the next one.